Hello student, the question says, the net electric field at the center of an equilateral triangle carrying charges at the, so carrying charges at the vertices as shown in figure. So we have these, we have an equilateral triangle and we have point charges, which is Q and minus Q and plus Q. We have to find the net field at the center. So let us solve this. Before we solve this problem, we should understand in an equilateral triangle, what is the distance between the vertices of the triangle and to the center? We should know this distance. So for convenience, I will call it x. And let us assume this distance is a. So the side length from here to here is a. And this value is x. Now based on this, the total angle in an equilateral triangle is 60 degree. So exactly half of that angle would be equal to 30 degree. Since half of that is 30 degree, if I redraw this situation, so we'll have this x and from here to here, one line and here to here, another line. So this is my x, this is 30 degree. And since this is the centroid, exactly if I draw a perpendicular, the length of this base for this right angle triangle would be a by 2. A is the side length of the equilateral triangle. So, which trigonometry function relates this hypotenuse with the base? It would be cos theta. So, we can write cos 30 degree equals to A by 2 whole divided by x. So, x would become A by 2 divided by cos 30 degree. Whenever we have a fraction in the numerator, it is better to write the denominator beside it rather than writing below it. That means it is better to write a by 2 into 1 by cos 30 degree. It will avoid a lot of confusion while solving the problems. So, you will finally get x equals to a by 2 into 1 by cos 30 degree is root 3 by 2. So, we finally get this value as a by root 3. So, the value of x, we got it as a by root 3. This is useful in solving this problem. So, this is the first thing that you have to know before we solve this problem. Now, let us go for the next part the actual way to solve these problems suppose if you have plus q and plus q here actually it is given as minus q in the question this is given as minus q imagine we have a another plus q here if you have three equal charges if you have three equal charges what is the net field at this center if you need to find the net field at the center First, we have to find what is the direction of field due to this charge. Due to a positive charge, the field would be away from it in this way. This is the first force. Next, what is the field due to this charge at this point? This one also would be away from it. What is the field due to this charge at this point? This one also would be away from it. If you notice it, the centroid is at equal distances from all the three charges. Since it is at equal distances, since the charges are also equal, if this is E, this one also would be E and this one also would be E. And the net field would have been 0. So if we have three equal charges, the net field would be 0. But the issue with our problem is that here we don't have three equal charges. Here we have plus Q, here we have plus Q and finally we have minus Q here. So plus Q, plus Q. If it was plus q, without even solving, we could have marked the answer as 0. But since it is minus q, then how are we supposed to approach this problem? There is a very good way to solve the problem. There are many ways to solve it. Let us look at one of the ways where we can solve these kind of problems quickly. Now, this is minus 2q. So, what I will do is, this minus 2q, I will break it down. I will write minus q equals to, if there is another plus q, my problems are solved, I will write q minus 2q. I will write this minus q as q minus 2q. There is a reason why I wanted to write this minus q as q minus 2q. So, this minus q, I will remove it. In place of this, I will write q. But since to balance this, we can write, there is another minus 2q that is left. So, finally, listen to this, we have minus q. I have written this as plus q minus 2q. Now the question is why did I write plus q? 
I know that if there is a plus Q, the net field due to these three charges is zero. That means these three charges field will destroy each other. And I can redraw this diagram as in the same way. I can now assume as though these charges are not contributing anything. So this plus Q, this plus Q, this plus Q, all these three together would give me the net field as zero as we have seen earlier. Now, what is the remaining charge if the net field due to these three charges is zero? The only thing that is remaining is minus 2q here. So, this entire problem, this entire problem that is given in the question can be assumed as a single charge minus 2q placed at this location. Why? Because this minus q, we have written as q minus 2q. And these three Q's will have a net field zero. So the only remaining thing is minus 2Q. Once we have this minus 2Q and this point O, will it attract or ripple? So we know that there would be a net attraction towards this direction. So the electric field would be in this direction. So once we know the direction of electric field, let us just find the magnitude of electric field. The magnitude of electric field is K. Q divided by whatever the distance x square. So K into what is the total charge here? I will write small q to avoid confusion. So the total charge that is located at B is minus 2Q. But whenever we take the formula for a field or force, since they are vectors, we only take magnitude of charge. Remember in electrostatics topic, whenever we take for a field, and for force, since these are vectors, we will not substitute minus 2q in place of charge. Yes, while writing the formula, we will write k q1 q2 by r square. But q1 q2 should always be magnitude of charges. We should not take the sign convention for that. So once that is done, k q by x square in place of q, we will write 2q divided by x square. Now you are wondering then what is the need of this plus q and minus 2q. This minus 2q will only help us to determine the direction of the field. Since we are we have net negative charge, the direction of field would be attractive in this way. So finally, this is the expression that we got. I'll take it to the next slide. So on further simplifying it, we know this value is k value means 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into 2q. x value we just found out it is a by root 3 whole square. So a by root 3 whole square would become 2q by 4 pi epsilon naught a square by 3. We can take it to the numerator. So net field would be this is just a magnitude. It would be 6q by 4 pi epsilon naught into a square where a is the side length and this is the net field that we are getting. So in this way, we can solve the problems quickly rather than doing, uh, rather than finding, there are some books where they solve this is E, this is another E and due to this minus Q we have one more and we use the resolution of it to get the net value. But the better way would be to quickly balance the charges. This is basically called balancing the charge method. So we quickly balance these charges and once we balance these charges, we can solve the problems very easily. Hope you understood how I have solved. Thank you.